Okay, I'm going to come out with this video really quick because I want to um, reply to a comment that a user named BB left to the video that I just uploaded earlier a couple hours ago. I don't know why BB deleted his comment because it was excellent and on point. And basically his comment was something like, so basically it's telling me that I have to go to a place that I have to walk, but the place that we begin is too far away from where we could walk from. And he's exactly right. He's exactly right. That's dead on. So I'm going to do this on the fly, but I'm still going to do it in the official video. Let's break this stanza down. <clears throat> Let's analyze it, break it down into clauses and phrases. Okay. Now we're going to do that one sentence at a time. And for now, we, we can see there's two sentences here. We got one sentence here, and then we got one sentence up here. So when you're breaking it down, you're going to break it down one sentence at a time. Okay, because we want to find out the main subject and verb in each sentence. So the first way to break the sentence down, the very first step that you should always do is find the verbs. So we're going to underline all of the verbs in green here. So the first verb, begin. Second verb, halt. Third verb, take. There's no other verbs in this sentence. Down here, the verb is actually a verbal phrase called put in. So after you've got the verbs, you want to find out the next step is what is the subject for each verb? Who is who or what is performing each action? And we'll do those in blue. So the first verb, who's who's going to begin it? Well, the reader is going to begin it. This is what they call an imperative. It's saying begin it. In other words, you begin it. Um, the shortest sentence you could probably make is go. Just the word go. And, and that's an imperative because it's an implied subject, you, the reader. So the subject here is you. Even though you can't see it, it's implied. So that's the subject for that verb, okay? What about the rest of the verbs? Let's look at the next verb, halt. Well, it's going to be the noun right before it. It's going to be waters, where the waters halt. This is an adjective, just saying warm water. So right now, just, just work with me on this. The waters are what's halting. I'm sure everybody would agree with that, right? So what is the what is the, the subject for the verb take? Well, there doesn't have to be a subject listed there because you here what we have is we have compound verbs. All right. We have halt is one verb, and take is a second verb. So this conjunction, and I'll circle, I'll underline that in purple, that conjunction is joining the two verbs, meaning halt and take. We know it's joining the two verbs because Forrest friend did not put a comma here. And I'm not going to get involved in debating punctuation. We're going to read the poem the way he wrote it, and he doesn't have a comma there. I'm not going to invoke any rules or anything like that. The comma makes it, the lack of a comma makes it clear that the subject for both of those verbs is waters, okay? So in other words, take is not imperative. He is not telling us to take it. He's telling us that we're going to begin it where warm waters halt and take. In other words, the waters are going to halt. And whatever it is that's there, like a creek or a stream, is going to take it down. Imagine a sink, right? So you're brushing your teeth and you spill the water in the sink. The, the, the sink is going to go in the drain and take it down into the sewer. That's basically what he's telling you here. Now, so we got, we got the verbs and we got the nouns. We know that this is an imperative, okay? So what is everything else here, all right? Well, let's do these. Let's look for prepositional phrases. And I'll do the prepositional phrases in blue or gray, let's say, light gray, right? So what do we got uh, prepositions? Now, a prepositional phrase is something that begins with a preposition. And it ends with a noun. It has to end with a noun or a pronoun. If it doesn't, that means that the word is not acting as a preposition. It's acting as some other form of speech that it works with. Now, in between the preposition and the noun, there can be modifiers like adjectives or determiners. All right. So let's look for the first prepositional phrase. The first preposition that we have is the word in. Now, like I just said, it's going to be followed with a noun, okay? 
So the noun in this case is canyon. So the prepositional phrase is, oops, I didn't want to do that because it changes the color. Um, the prepositional phrase is in the canyon, in. So the preposition is in. I'm not going to get into what, what in means. It basically means in, within the boundary, within the canyon. You can, other prepositions are on, above, below, so on and so forth. But this is saying in. And each one of those prepositions has this very specific meaning. Okay? The word the is just a determiner, it's called. Think of it like an adjective. It's telling you which canyon, the canyon. Okay? The, the determiner or article the is something very specific. Uh, this is a very specific canyon, the canyon, right? It, another determiner is the, the A, the word A, right? But A is not specific. So if I said in a canyon, that could mean any canyon. You know, so if I went to my wife, for an example, and I said, I seen a dog running down the street. She would immediately know that I'm talking about some dog, probably other than our own dog, right? But if I said the dog was running down the canyon, she's probably going to say, you know, the name of our dog. Oh, my God, he was running down the, down the road or whatever, because I'm being very specific. I said the dog, as opposed to a dog. There's a big difference there. So you should know what this canyon is. We have another preposition, too. But in this case, it's not being used as a preposition because it's not followed by a noun. It's followed by a verb. This is acting like a verb. So what does they, this is what they call a two plus infinitive. And what the way that's formed is you take the uh, particle two and you add it with the base or infinitive form of a verb. Well, this is the base form of walk, right? It doesn't have any tensor. It's to walk. When you have an infinitive, even though this is a verb, we're treating this whole phrase as a noun. And when you have the to plus infinitive, it basically means in order to. So you could read this as like, if this was run, it'd be in order to run. In our case, it's in order to walk. So when he says not far, but too far, these are basically adverbs, okay? And they're basically telling us how far in the canyon it's going to be taken, okay? And he's saying here, not far, but too far. In other words, it's going to be near, but it's too far to walk. So everything, if you, if you take everything in context here, to walk means in order to walk. So he's basically telling us up here that he wants us to get into a position that we're able to walk from. And that position is too far from the point that we begin. That's, that's basically it in a nutshell. He's not giving you a precise location. He never leaves the canyon, okay? We're going to begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down, not far but too far to walk. Like I said, this, this whole thing, right, is working as, a, as an adverb, and it's modifying the word take. It's just it's giving us a distance, an approximate just too far to walk. So it's modifying date, all right? That's exactly what this whole thing is doing here. It's formed by the infinitive, and it's formed by these adverbs. Not far, but, which is a coordinating conjunction. So we got two adverb phrases. here: Not far, too far, joined by the conjunction, but. That whole thing, again, let me, let me do it in um, this light blue. Let's take it. That is basically, like I said, referring back to this. It's telling us how far. It's too far to walk. That's what that adverb is modifying. Okay. This, and let's do these in, in yellow, I guess. Let's look at adjectives now. This is an adjective. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the as an adjective because I don't want to get into it, but it really is a determiner. 
but it's it's telling you it's describing it's an adjective because it's describing the noun. What kind of waters? Warm waters. Which canyon? The canyon. So that is um, an adjective. That's an adjective. What about direct objects? Whenever you have a verb that's telling you to do something, it's usually followed by a noun or pronoun that's going to tell you what you're operating on. Like if I said, hit the ball, the ball is a direct object, right? In our case, and I'm going to, I guess I'll do these as uh, light blue. It, It doesn't really matter, but these are pronouns, okay, which take the place of a noun. But those are the direct objects. I should have done this before, but down is just another adverb. <clears throat> and it's basically telling you which way you're going to go in the canyon. Are we going up or down? We're going downstream. So this whole thing in the canyon and then down are modifying take, just like not far, but too far to walk. It's describing the verb. That's why it's an adverbial. We only really got one word left, and it's where. What is where? Well, the way, the way this works is there's two different types of clauses, independent and dependent. An independent clause is a group of words that has both a subject and a verb, and as a unit, it stands alone and has meaning. In other words, it doesn't need any help. It stands alone as a full sentence. Okay, That's what an independent clause is. And every sentence must have at least one independent clause. The other thing about independent clauses is that there's the main subject, okay, and the main verb, because like I said, every clause, including a subordinate clause, is going to have a subject and a verb, right? But the main subject and verb, or the main thought and verb of the sentence, has to come from an independent clause. So, and this might freak some of you out, but trust me, this is correct. So. The main clause in this sentence, okay, is right here. That's it. That can stand on its own. Begin it. I can tell somebody, begin it. Run, go, begin it. Okay. We're not going to get involved right now with it means, because in order to understand what it means, you need to know the previous stanza. And I'm just going to give you kind of a heads up. It doesn't necessarily mean the word treasures. It means that. The whole first stanza is basically describing what Forrest Fenn did. And down in stanza two, he's taking you to steps of how he did it. So we're following in his steps here, okay? So it is not necessarily the quest. It is the series that he describes in the first stanza, okay? Except we don't have the physical treasure chest, but that's what Forrest said. He took the physical treasure chest into the canyon down, Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But this is an independent clause. This is the main clause of the sentence up here. You begin it. So where, where is what they call, it's it's another conjunction, but it's a different type. It's not a coordinating conjunction. It's what they call a subordinating conjunction. And what that means is that it is used to begin a clause, a subordinated clause, or a dependent clause that is dependent on other parts of the sentence in order to work. In other words, it don't stand on its own. And you can hear that right here, because if I said to you, if I walked up to you and I said, where warm water, salt, and take it in the canyon down, not far, but too far to walk, you would look at me like I'm crazy, because that's not a complete sentence, okay? Well, of course it isn't, because... I left out the independent clause. So where is a subordinate in conjunction? And the subordinate or dependent clause is all of this. So this sentence is um, formed from an independent clause and a, and a, um, a subordinate clause. Okay. Where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down, not far but too far to walk. This whole entire clause that I just underlined is basically going to tell you where to begin it. 
Think of it as operating as an adverb. The whole clause is an adverb. That's modifying the word begin. Okay? So we got you begin it. Well, where do I begin it, Troy? Well, you begin it. Wear warm water salt and take it into county down. Not far, but too far to walk. All right? That is basically the breakdown of this part of the stanza. Now, the second stanza is pretty simple because we got another um, compound, actually, a compound um, prepositional phrase. We got two prepositions here. Below, like I said, below is a preposition, above, in, at, under, all right? Of is also a, pres a preposition. And then we got again, so this prepositional phrase here, like I said, they always end in a noun. So we got below the home, okay? Home is our noun, all right? Now this prepositional phrase is slightly different. And I'm not gonna get into it now because I think you're gonna have to know a lot of other things. For example, why it's capitalized doesn't necessarily mean that it's a noun. There's things called uh, proper adjectives, okay? So, but the point is that this, below the home, of the home, this preposition phrase here is actually modifying home. In other words, which home? Uh, brown. So it's providing, it's working as an adjective modifying home. Which, which home? Well, it's giving you more detail, the home of brown, okay? So we're going to put in below the home of brown, right? That's a pretty simple sentence. And again, this is another imperative. He's telling you to put in. So the subject here, again, is you. So if you look at this entire stanza, he's only giving you two directions. He's telling you that you're going to begin it where warm water salt, take it to the guy you down. Not far, but too far to walk. Notice, he, you are not going to go in the canyon down. He's telling you right here, it's too far to walk. So the only other command he's given you here is to put in below the home ground. So this is the starting point. This is the first clue. But you're not going to do anything until you get to the home of Brown, which is clearly going to be until you get below the home of Brown, I'm sorry, which is clearly a place that you could walk from. That's why he's got to walk here. Now, he doesn't get into any details as to why you can't walk from here. In my saw, it just so happens you can't do it because you would fall to your death trying to get to where the treasure chest is. You're going to reach a point that only the water can go by because it goes over a waterfall. When, you know, so you can't possibly get there if you followed the creek, your creek, from where Walmart's halted. It just won't work. You're going to reach a point that only the water can go. So instead of even trying to travel into the canyon, down, we're going to put in below the home of Brown. Now think about this. The very next line says, from there, it is no place for the meat. <clears throat> well, the very first stanza says that Forrest Sun went alone in there. In there. In is another preposition. It means within the boundaries of. There. Well, the only other place the word there, when it's referring to a location, exists in the poem is line nine, the very next line. Now you can kind of see why we took the word there, but I don't want to get into that here. I'm not going to get into my grammar in, the, in my grammar video either, but basically that's it. Okay. So the stanza prior to this is saying he went alone in there, okay, with his treasured bolt. Right? And he keeps his secret where? And hence the rich is new and old. Well, that stanza becomes it here. So we're going to begin what he's talking about in that stanza here. But he's telling us again that the waters, which is the subject for all, and the subject for take is also waters. Whenever you have compound verbs, they share the same subject. That's how it works. Unless Forrest had a common there. A common would change it completely right? But he doesn't have a comma there. So it's clear that the waters take it into Canyon Down. How far? Not far, but too far. Do walk. So why did he use the two in part of here? 
because he's trying to have a double meaning here. He's trying to tell you that it's too far to walk. So why would he say that? Well, he's saying that because you're going to have to drive. You're going to have to drive in order to get to the place that you put in. Now, when I talked in my previous video about labels, okay, the home of Brown, that's just a label. That's just a label that he, right now, as far as reading the poem, he gave that to all of this. You know, kind of think of it this way. He's like, he's describing something to you. But then at the end, he's saying, but, but don't worry about it because you can't walk there from here anyway. You're going to have to put in below the home of Brown. See how I am to my inflection here? You have to put in below the home of Brown. So in other words, this, when you get to the correct word, Walmart's halts, should all be within your home of Brown. And you're going to put in below that. So you can start to form a mental picture. And clearly, the place where warm waters halt is at a high elevation. And it goes, and it takes it in a canyon down, not far, but too far to walk. Which means there's no way <coughs> to walk from where warm waters halt into your canyon. So if your solve is starting at, let's say, Madison Junction, and you're walking west into Madison Canyon, your sobs are already broken and wrong because he's telling you that to enter the canyon, it, it's too far to walk. Instead of even going into the canyon, you're going to have to go in from the other end. You're going to put in below, below all of this. And then he's telling you there'll be no paddle up your creek, meaning you're going to be going back upstream now. So he's taking you in from below because obviously there's an obstacle of some sort that's preventing you from walking there from where warm waters halt. This is what I mean by the context, right? This is why you have to know the context. So now when you're looking up, for example, in the canyon, you're not going to look up the word canyon. You know it's a noun. You know what a canyon is. You know what the is, saying the canyon. But you need to look at this and say, what does he mean by the canyon? Like I said before, if I tell my wife, the dog is sick, she'll know what dog I'm talking about. Now, if I said a dog is sick, sick, then she won't know the dog. But I'm telling you that the dog's not, it's not an important dog. It's just a dog, right? And in, of course, means within the boundaries of. So when you get to this point, we should already know what canyon we're talking about. You know? and, and again, I don't want to get into the solves here, but in Five Springs, it's obvious because warm water's halt in Five Springs Basin, right? So the is, is obviously sharing the same name, Five Springs Canyon. Okay. So anyway, th this is basically the kind of stuff that I'm going to do in the next video, except I'm going to do it for each stanza. <clears throat> and unlike this specific video here, I'm not going to mention my solve at all. You know, but, but I'm just trying to show you how you determine the context. A lot of people are going into dictionaries and looking up individual words. That doesn't work. You have to know how the word is being used. You know, take halt. It could be a noun. But the way he's using it, it's clearly a verb. You know, same thing as waters. That could be a verb. He waters the grass. But obviously, in this usage here, it's being used as a noun. Same thing with warm being an adjective. And where is clearly an adverb. But the thing is, it's also being used as a conjunction in this case. And since it's an adverb here, we know that this is an adverb phrase because he's telling us where to begin it. So it's clear that this whole entire thing after the word it up here is an adverbial modifying begin. It's telling us where to begin. It. Okay. That's that's it. Is that so as far as clues go, sure, where warmer salt is a clue. Canyon down is a clue. Not far, but too far to walk. It's another clue. And put it below on brown. Probably clue number four, right? We know that this up here is the first clue, this line. We, we know that. Forrest friend had told us that. So you can work the clues out like that. But the thing is, you can't go to a map yet. Because Forrest friend said that just knowing, just the words where, begin it where warm water salt and, 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 you know, and take it in the canyon down, is not enough to determine the starting location. So in other words, even if you, it's pointless to go to a map 
and try to find something synonymous with where Walmart is hauled. Because there's a million such places. We need the right place. So until we know that, we can't possibly know where to begin. That's what he means by you need to know where to start. He's not telling you that you need to go to a map and make sure you have the right location of where warm water's halt. What he's telling you is that that line alone is not enough. You need the rest of the poem. You need all the ingredients in order to even determine the starting point. Once we've determined where to start or begin, like T.S. Eliot said, we're going to arrive there and know the place for the very first time. What that means is that these clues are going to then become really obvious where Warm Water's Halt and the Canyon Down, the Home of Brown, all of that stuff should fit into your solve. And the way we're navigating through this area where he's using, you know, up, down, in, all of that stuff is going to come into play. <clears throat> and you can determine that at this stage, which is exactly what I did. So clearly we're not walking down any canyon. If your solve says we're walking down a canyon, your solve is wrong. You cannot go to the spot where your warm water starts on and walk down. That's, that's wrong. That's not what he's telling you to do. At no point is he telling you in this stanza to go down the canyon. That's a fact. I'm not speculating. That's had nothing to do with interpretation. I'm reading it exactly based on how Forrest Fenn wrote it. I'm factoring in everything exactly the way he wrote it. I'm not changing anything. I'm not putting commas where they don't exist, and I'm not removing anything, okay? But that's how he wrote it. We have compound verbs, right? The subject is waters for both verbs, halt and take. So the waters are halting and taking it to canyon down, not you. And that's why I always say, and I've been saying this since 2015, too bad Dow sites down, because you would see why must I go on there talking about this specific topic. Because I said it on Dallas, the first thing everybody's wrong is that you're assuming that you go down the canyon. <clears throat> sure enough, everybody started arguing with me, just like they argue with Sam. What? There's no waters where you're warm at all? What, Troy, what do you mean? Well, clearly it's telling you to go down the canyon. And I'm like, no, clearly it's not telling me to go down the canyon. Like, the, the subject is waters. And people would argue with me, and Dow, being Dow, banned me. Because he doesn't, he didn't, he never wanted a good discussion on there. That was the problem with Dow's website, right? It was all a bunch of crap on there. Nobody knew what the hell they were talking about, all right? You have to do this with the poem. I don't care where your solve is. Even if my solve is wrong, my interpretation of the poem is not subjective. It's, it's, it's not up for interpretation. There's only one way to read this, okay? Like I said, if Forrest Fenn makes a grammatical error, and he hasn't up to this point. If he did, I would point it out to you, but he hasn't. Everything he did fits perfectly, including his punctuation. All right? If any of his punctuation was indifferent, then of course, what I'm reading to you, it would it would be completely different. You know, if he had a comma after the word halt, then that would completely change it because that would mean that take is also an imperative, and he's telling you to begin it, where one more salt, and he's telling you to take it and kind of down. But that's not what he's doing here, okay? And like I said, in the context, that makes it very clear that somewhere up high in elevation is where warm waters halt and it goes down into a canyon. He says warm waters. So there's plural. There's more than one, all right? And they're going to start up there, and they're going down. And at some point in the middle of that canyon or somewhere, because we never leave the canyon. We enter, but we never leave it. He's telling us to put in below the home of Brown, below it. So we're going to put in below the, home, the canyon and walk up it. So we're walking back in the direction that we came from. That's exactly, and I, I tell you, go open up the thrill of the chase and read looking for Lewis and Clark. Read what they did. <clears throat> he looked to the sun, okay, and he found out where east was by seeing where the sun rose. Then he looked to the south, and there was a Biggest mountain you ever seen. So they they look for the nearest fast moving stream or creek. I forgot what he said, and they followed it downstream until they reached a point where where they they said that they could see their destination. Okay, but only the water could go through. And then I think that um, that Donnie made some kind of a comment that 
if we keep going, we're going to end up where we, we want to go or something like that. But anyway, they couldn't go there. So now, now imagine, like I said, in my saw, you're walking down from the basin and you get to the waterfalls. Well, you've reached that same point. So in Florida Friends story, what they do is they turn around, they go back upstream, they find the nearest forest road, and then they follow it out all the way down. And then they end up coming back home to where they wanted to go. So, hmm, I wonder if their home was at a campsite, right? That's below a waterfalls. Just saying it, right? So, but they can't get to it. They can see it from the top. They can't get to it. They had to first put in below Doma Brown, i.e., in my case, that would be the crossroads of culture. And they had to head up towards heavy loads and water high. No paddle up their creek, just heavy loads of water high, right? Anyway, I don't know why you deleted your comment, BB. It was an excellent comment, excellent comment, and right on point. Exactly. That's exactly what I mean. Peace.